Why should you play Project Zomboid? Hey, it's me, Jet, and welcome to a love letter from me to Project Zomboid. Now, why should you bother with a game that specifically looks like it's from the PlayStation 1 era? Furthermore, it's so ridiculously hard, how are you even supposed to enjoy this? Well, let me try and convince you with some anecdotal evidence. 1. Replayability. I originally played Project Zomboid years ago, back in 2013, when it was a much less significant game. Honestly, looking back on it, I definitely only played it once, got bored within a few minutes, and then left. Because the game was just so much simpler back when it first came out. However, no matter what happened, I would always end up coming back to the game. And it doesn't really make sense, you know, there was nothing really going on, but there was something fun about it. And the more updates it got, the more things that happened as years went on from 2014 to 2016, I would always come back to check updates, to check patches, and to give it another playthrough. It's been like that for years. The game always gets updated, it always gets more stuff, it always improves, and to the point where it's reached its current build as of today. The game's build as of today will legitimately have you come back all the time to play it. There's always a different way to play, something new to try, and more and more reasons to go back. You can turn the zombies on ultra hard for no reason. You can be like, nah, I want to play on CDDA, but I want to see if I can make it to West Point. I want to try CDDA with a broken leg. Shameless plug to other videos on the channel. Go check out the first episode of that. More is coming soon. I did not, definitely not editing this right now because this is faster to get out. And I'm like 50% sure I won't get the other video done and my other editors won't get stuff done in time. You can't prove that. You can't. Anyway, yes, eventually you'll probably get bored, especially if you survive for about a month, you're going to get bored because you realize that in Project Zomboid, the survival side of things really comes down to just sitting around your house improving skills. That's not really the most fun thing on the world, but eventually you're going to have to leave your safety because you are missing key items that you need to survive. Maybe you don't have a hammer to improve your carpentry. Maybe you don't have food and you're running out of it. Maybe you don't have water and you need that to survive. Maybe you don't have somewhere to sleep and so you really just want a new bed. Eventually, you will be forced out of just staying at home and grinding the skills. So you end up with this amazing mix of having downtime where you're inside your house slash base slash compound building up your character whether through exercise skills or maybe you're healing up from an injury or a broken leg because you jumped out of a house and the need to go out and get items to survive. If you had everything in this game, there would be nothing to do and it would be boring because you could just sit on top of a roof and never need to leave. The fun of this game is the constant need to scavenge. This system on its own is amazing because by all means, the only thing between you and living forever in this game is the constant amount of undead. And now you might be thinking, oh, the undead. In other video games, you can just take loads of damage. You can just go get hit. I mean, you gotta heal anyway. It doesn't work like that in this game. If you get bitten once by a zombie, that's it. You are infected. Game over. You're going to become a zombie. If you get scratched, it is rather 3 or 7% chance to churn. I can't actually remember. I know a laceration is 25%. But by all means, every encounter with a zombie in this game is life or death. You need to take that seriously. So you have this amazing downtime away from it all, which gives you time to just go, oh. I'm not surrounded by constant death everywhere. But you also have the reality of, when am I going to go out next? I have a timer before I need to leave this house and go back out there and get more stuff. I need this, I need that, and I need this to survive. And the fun part is, is that eventually that becomes even harder because the electricity will shut off. Once it's shut off, the game becomes, you have to farm, you have to get generators, you need to learn the skills to then hook up your generator to your house to then keep it going. There is never a point in this game where you could just sit in your house and do nothing. Unless you've just, you know, gone to the sandbox and options and just cranked up loot so you never really need to try to find things. If you're doing that, you're going to get bored and stop playing the game. That's just, that's a given. <laughs> but you will come back to this game for another playthrough. And that leads me to my next point of why. Something about a girl. Now, this is more something that requires some explaining first, and for that, I am really sorry. But it's in fact time to go back, 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 back. Now, do you remember when you were a child? I don't. I have brain damage. Assuming you don't have that, and you used to get like so fondly excited with that feeling inside your stomach. For like games where Fallout New Vegas, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 1, even games before that, like Dino Crisis would come out. See, those games used to make me feel a type of excitement that I can never even replicate as an adult. Games like you'd probably only get for Christmas time. 
because that was the only real times that I would ever really get games as a kid. I don't feel like I'm not the only person like that. Well, I think that's kind of normal because your parents don't really like spoiling you and, you know, prefer that you would work hard for everything you got instead of just giving you everything. That way you develop healthy work ethic. Either way, the emotions that I would feel as a child at Christmas when I would imagine playing the game before I even got to play it. Excitement inside of me, that warmness, that I must play the game right now. Afterwards, getting the game and playing the game for days non-stop and even trying to avoid as much school as possible. The amount of school I missed was like, not good. You'll probably remember feeling like this as a kid. Or you've probably felt like it recently. I hope so. It's a really nice thing to feel, that excitement of wanting to do something more than anything. And the thing is, the whole reason I'm making this video is because I have that feeling for Project Zomboid. I'm making this video because I thought about Project Zomboid and all the possibilities, the depth I could do, all the different possibilities you can do in the game, even for just simple things like going out, scavenging, getting food, farming, making water barrels for water, and just putting buckets outside. It all sort of hit me for once in my life, and I felt excited to play a game again. I never feel excited to play games, well I do, some games are good, but this one was different, this is one that you can just keep coming back to. This alone is why you should go play the game honestly, and if you haven't tried it, or even failed at it, give it a go anyway. You will eventually have a great time, because by all means, yes, th this fighting the zombies part is hard, but realistically, they're not that hard to get over. Once you've learned the combat and you've mastered it, you don't even get hit anymore, and when you do, it's on you more than anything. Have a great time, and once you become an adept survivor, you will feel these emotions, and this is something that I want everyone to feel. But, why does it feel this way? Number 3. Immersion and Depth now, how could a game that looks like Sims 1 meets, you know, any PlayStation 1 game ever be in any way immersive? Well, here's a fun fact. Everything you place on the ground has a 3D model. That's not a joke. You can walk into a house and then barricade it up and then through that entire experience, place things around. You can put a guitar around because your character for some reason decided that he wanted to play guitar. You can start filling up the corner with cans because you have nowhere else to put them. You can start putting all your food onto the shelves because you have no more space inside of them because for some reason you got really lucky and now you have so much food that you can live there forever. The fact that you can just customize any space that you're in by just placing things down just adds so much depth and character to any place that you stay in. Kind of like living somewhere in real life. Eventually, you're going to start placing things down, forgetting that you put it there and be like, oh yeah, right, I have a table just covered in axes. Why? Right, yeah, I have no idea. The clothes you put on your characters, down to the rings even, show up. You can wear a welding mask and it will show up on your character. You can wear a hat and it will show up on your character. You can wear a full set of army gear and it will show up on your character. Everything in the game has a physical 3D model that can be represented. It's not just a simple situation of weird RPG maker games, right? You change your armor and nothing on the character changed. In this, you can pick a random character, a random build, and you can explore how they would survive in the zombie apocalypse. It's not like other games where you have a set story, and I know a story is coming to this game eventually, but the story is what you make it. For instance, when I played with my friend, we were playing Project Zomboid, and we were out in the countryside. I can't remember where we spawned because for the life of me, I couldn't remember. We were going from point A to point B the entire day that our characters were starting to get exerted. We were, we were sitting down and stuff. But when you start in the morning and you eventually make it to nighttime and you found this nice house, you cleared it out from the zombies, you go upstairs, you block the door because you're like, yeah, nothing's going to get in here. Legitimately, the first thing he did was like, just like, oh yeah, we should take the backpacks off, you know, feel better about the situation. Get that off of our shoulders because that's not going to be good. There's something about this game where you start relating to the character and going, you know what? I should just start treating them better. The first thing I did when I first got a house set up in Project Zomboid was created house clothes. Clothes they wear around the house that wasn't what we go out in. Because fun fact, you heat up and get colder in this game. So if you're always in your zombie fighting gear because it all has this amazing bite defense, which is a thing by the way, you know, everything, every bit of clothing in this game has stats, you end up wearing stuff that has the best bite and scratch defense. However, when you're around the house, why would you even get attacked? It should be safe. You set up walls, you built them around. There's carpentry. You can build walls. So you're safe in your house. So why wouldn't you just naturally, in that situation, have a set of clothing that you'd wear around the house? It's weird, but it's things that you do because it just, it itches that scratch in the back of your brain. The idea that my friend and I were just sitting there, he'd only played the game once. This is the first time we've ever played the game. And the first thing he did in that situation was, let's take the bag off, you know, let's take the shoes off. We're inside. We get to sleep now. We're safe. Just goes to show how much you can get into this game and how much it allows it as well. Everything in this game just challenges your brain to get immersed. And the depth is just 
the cooking system. The fact that you can just pick up a frying pan and a bunch of cooking ingredients and then just go, you know, I'm gonna make a stir fry. Let's put some steak in there. Let's put some cauliflower in there. Let's put a canned beans in there for no reason. And then you add some sauce and some salt and pepper and you cook that thing up and then your character's full for a day. It's sick, honestly. I don't know why other games don't just allow you to cook like this, where it's just up to you what's in it. That would be great. Imagine a Bethesda game or any game for past that. Imagine playing Fallout and you just have all these random canned foods and now you can just mix them together into whatever you want. That's the kind of stuff that makes you want to play games more. Because that means in multiplayer, randomly you can put a bunch of food combinations that sound awful and feed it to your friend. That's hilarious. You can also put bleach in your food. So if they're a new person, you can just kill them outright. And it's funny. <laughs> I mean, it's not really funny. It's kind of mean. Four, the gameplay loop. Okay, we get it. The game is special, it's immersive, it has cool mechanics, and it pulls you in. But what do you do in this game? Well, you kill zombies and survive. But it's not about that specifically. Every single time you load into this game, it will be different. At one time, you might find it really easy to get a set of tools, and you might start in a place that just has loads of weapons around. Well, now you're sorted for weaponry, but you don't have any food. Well, what's the next progression of that? Okay, well, I'm gonna get hungry eventually. Let's go find some place that has food. Maybe rob some houses, maybe a store or two. All right, next. What now? I need somewhere to sleep at night. I have my food. Where do I go? A random house. Sure, that works. So just block up the door and sleep it for tonight. And then randomly you're at night and then zombies are now attacking your base and you've woken up in the middle of the night because you're actually an idiot and you're tracking them all over. What do you do now? Well, now you have to grab your stuff, hopefully, and get the fuck out of Dodge. Because if you don't, you die. It's just different. It's just the quests aren't set out. It's all different every single time. There are playthroughs where I found it incredibly hard and I had to sweat my ass off just to go camping. Video there, by the way. Check it out. It's good. And then I died. And then the second playthrough with a different character was just, oh yeah, let's grab all the stuff. Oh, right, we're going camping now. This is easy. The game will just start throwing stuff at you. And again, this game isn't about, you know, surviving as long as possible. By all means, the starting screen says it itself. This is how you died. This game isn't about making it to a year. I mean, surviving as long as you can, of course. But this is the story of how your character died. And the thing is, you get to decide how they died. Are you going to be greedy and go back for water when you don't need to? Are you going to just survive out in the wilderness doing nothing just fishing for your food every single day are you going to be in the middle of city cutting off all the stairs because you found a sledgehammer early and just live there every single day that is the fun of project zomboid you get to decide the way you survive and you can do it differently every single time there are so many people out on youtube who have done so many different playthroughs they've done the floor is lava where they have to survive on the roofs and they can't go back down to the ground but the point is, is that every mechanic in this game will get you to connect with your character you're in a room it's dark what are you gonna do you need food you're hungry you have no weapon you're cold where do you go and that's the thing it's all up to you it's your job to survive and honestly, the choices you make, this is how you died. Hit the sub button and all that stuff. I don't know. Love you. Bye. Shout out to the Patreons, Muddles, Bubble Doodle Bomb, Bean, and the Anxiety Ranger, Chaz. Like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you disliked it. Subscribe to the Bold Joy Jettos Jesters today. Leave a comment to share what you want to say. Subscribe to my Patreon to support me in a giant way. Join the live streams on YouTube and Twitch so you can watch me play. But as usual, make sure all of you have a good rest of your day.